a video of a response to the rational skeptic who has brought up what's kind of a tired topic, and as a result, some of what I say most of you have probably heard before, but I hope I can add a few novel thoughts into the mix. So the rational skeptic has uh, raised the question, does atheism require faith? Well, that depends what you mean by atheism and what you mean by faith. Taking the term atheist strictly, then there is absolutely no faith required to be an atheist at all, because as has been pointed out numerous times by virtually everyone who's ever spoken on this topic, atheism is simply a lack of belief. That is the single and only necessary and sufficient condition to be an atheist. And the rational skeptic even seems to acknowledge as much at the very beginning of his video, almost in passing. To use some of the great lines that have been used to make this point, bald is not a hair color, pedestrian is not a model of car, health is not a disease, and atheism is not a kind of faith. It takes no more faith to not believe in God than it does to not believe in Thor, Quetzalcoatl, the abominable snowman, or the galactic lord Xenu. And if you're thinking that maybe, well, maybe it does take faith not to believe in those things, you have to realize what you're committing yourself to. You're saying that we all have an incredible amount of faith. Every single thing that we don't believe in, we have faith that those things don't believe. We have more faith than we do any other kind of psychological belief. That our, our faith would then completely outstrip all psychological capacities. That simply is not a very tenable position to hold. Anyone who lacks a belief in God for any reason at all is an atheist. People living in isolated tribes in sub-Saharan Africa who have never before heard of God or anything like him at all are atheists. Newborns and the cognitively disabled, whom are physiologically incapable of forming beliefs of any kind, are atheists. Now, as a point of psychological or biographical fact, most atheists don't simply lack a belief in God. They've considered and rejected that belief, or at least have considered and refused to accept that belief. Their reasons for rejecting or not accepting that belief often involve some sort of commitment to empiricism and science. And I think it's this commitment that the rational skeptic is trying to say involves uh, a measure of faith. I'll concede that uh, a reasonable argument can be made on this point. I'm going to contest that argument in a minute, but I want to clarify and underline what I think is the key point here. Even if the rational skeptic is right that some atheists arrive at their atheism by way of faith, that does not mean that it requires faith to be an atheist. It is an incidental, not a necessary condition. So, that having been said, let's look at the rational skeptic's argument that empiricism and science require faith. As I understand the rational skeptic's argument, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the rational skeptic uh, argues that many people are atheists because they hold that beliefs require evidence. Furthermore, they believe that there is no evidence for God, and hence, they reject the belief in God. But, as the rational skeptic rightly notes, there is no evidence for the claim that beliefs require evidence. So, the people that hold this belief hold it without evidence, and hence they hold it on faith. That is the, the argument the rational skeptic is making as I understand it. Now, I think this is a reasonable argument on its face, uh, but I still think it's one that is actually deeply flawed because it involves a very poor understanding of the word faith. A lot of philosophical problems arise when language goes on vacation, like Ludwig Wittgenstein said, and I think this is an example where language has gone on vacation. And the reason why is because the word faith is deeply ambiguous, and I think the whole conversation about, the, about whether or not atheism requires faith has been polluted by loose and irresponsible use of language. The rational skeptic defines faith as believing in something for which we have no evidence. This is indeed one dictionary definition of the word faith, but is it the best definition in this context? Does this definition of faith really fit what a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew means when they describe themselves as a person of faith? It seems to me that the religious use of the term faith is worlds apart from the definition that the rational skeptics used. So here are some other definitions of faith. This comes from dictionary.com. Uh, one, confidence or trust in a person or thing. Two, the obligation of loyalty or fidelity to a person, promise, or engagement. Three, the observance of this obligation, fidelity to one's promise, oath, allegiance, etc. It seems to me that these definitions are more suited to what the word faith means in a religious context. People who have faith in God do not simply believe in God despite a lack of evidence for his existence. 
Indeed, many persons of faith actually think there is ample evidence for the existence of God. For them, faith is not so much about deciding whether or not to believe God is real, so much as it's about deciding to commit yourself to God. A sincere, personal trust, devotion, and engagement with God that gives their life purpose, meaning, and value. That's what it means to describe yourself as a person of faith. Such an intimate, an existential, psychological relationship bears no resemblance at all to the skeptic's procedural claim that beliefs require evidence. To use the same word, faith, to refer to these two very different psychological states is an abuse of language. It equivocates between two very different concepts. Accordingly, I have a proposal. Let's reserve the word faith for the devotional sense of the term that I detailed above. It need not be exclusively religious. I might have faith in my wife, faith in my friends, faith in humanity, or I might have faith in God, faith in Christ, faith in Muhammad, etc. and so forth. By contrast, for the purely epistemological meaning that the rational skeptic used, that is, belief in something for which there is no evidence, I suggest we use the word assume. Many skeptics and atheists start with the assumption that beliefs require evidence. Note that assumption doesn't simply mean assertion. Assumptions can be examined or unexamined, supported or unsupported. I can give a rational argument to back up the empiricist's assumption that beliefs require evidence, but I can't provide empirical evidence to back it up. So, to sum up, atheism in the strict sense of the term does not require faith any more than a 6th century peasant required faith to not believe in quarks. But, as a matter of psychological or biographical fact, many atheists arrive at their atheism as a result of certain assumptions, possibly examined, possibly unexamined. Those assumptions, however, should not be equated with the faith that religious people have in God. The faith of the religious person is primarily about commitment rather than belief, meaning rather than methodology, and devotion rather than argument. Um, a quick PS, uh, it's one of the little side points the rational skeptic made, the point about Superman. Uh, the rational skeptic made the claim that I can't say I know Superman doesn't exist. Or rather, if I do make such a claim, that that claim involves some sort of faith, uh, that that claim is anti-science, because, well, we don't know everything. As far as we know, maybe Superman is out there somewhere. Uh, I think there's actually a simple way around this debate, in my opinion, um, and that's simply to stipulate that Superman is, by definition, a fictional character. Even if it turns out that somewhere in the universe there's a man named Clark Kent, and he can fly, leap tall buildings in a single bound, has x-ray vision, wears red and blue uh, uh, outfit with cape and big S on his chest, all that stuff. Even if he has all the qualities that the fictional Superman has, that would not be the Superman that the comic books are referring to. What we mean when we use the name Superman is to reference a fictional character. That is a non-existent, non-real being. And that does not change even if it turns out that there is a being that has all the same qualities of the fictional character. It's not like we would go, you know, be leaf leafing through the comic books and suddenly realize there is an actual Superman out there and go, wow, all these times the, the, the comic books were actually were true. No, it, it would just be a remarkable coincidence that the comic book happened to describe something that's out there in the real world. That wouldn't make the Superman in the comic books a real being. It would mean that there's two beings, a fictional Superman and a real Superman that happen to be indistinguishable for all intents and purposes. There actually is a huge literature on this topic in the philosophy of fiction, and I can particularly recommend uh, chapter 10 of this book right here. This is uh, Michael Jubian's Contemporary Metaphysics. Uh, it's a very accessible book, and chapter 10 deals with precisely this issue of whether or not there can be truth in fiction, so to speak. Um, full disclosure, Jubian was a professor of mine when I was an undergraduate, but really that's not uh, influencing my recommendation here. I'm recommending it simply because it's a relevant book, and it's very accessible. Uh, it's a great read. I think anyone who's interested in this kind of issue uh, would uh, find it worth their while to pick it up. All right, Rational Skeptic, thank you very much for uh, um, your video. I hope you found this thought-provoking and worthwhile. I'd love to hear back from you, and I'd love to hear back from anyone else as well. Take care. Talk to you later.